Good morning, everyone, and welcome to episode 36 of Builders Talk. And today I'm going to be talking to you about the year that has been. And boy, the year has flown really quickly, and I can't believe Christmas is probably only about five or six weeks away. So we start, I guess, inching towards the end of the year, and I wanted to sort of have a bit of a reflection about the crazy year that we've been through and you know, we're going to be sort of closing our doors for our Christmas shutdown in about five weeks' time and we're probably all starting to look forward to a big rest. Um, it's been very crazy and I'm sure a lot of us are really at the end of our tether and really wanting to have a break and I'm sure some builders may even take a longer break than usual to recharge and refocus on their business and, you know, start new the new year afresh so I know that everyone's list would be getting long before the year ends out and this time of the year brings out stress not only in the builders but in clients and basically everyone in general we asked all start to put pressure on ourselves really for one day of the year Christmas day everyone gets sort of highly strung and it makes it really hard as a business owner to get through the next five weeks and achieve everything that is on our list and I often feel like we have to walk around on eggshells. If we say the wrong thing to someone at the wrong time, you know, you can see the steam starting to radiate out of their ears and we know what the ramifications of that steam is. Potentially that works won't get completed in the timeframes that you are working forward to. And the pressure is on, you know, we have all our clients wanting to be in their homes for Christmas. And I never really understood the whole, I want to be in my house by Christmas. And I understand that people want a new home for Christmas but the in before Christmas is usually only a few days before Christmas, you know, which is when they get their house handed over. And it's usually, you know, full of dust that just seems to appear from everywhere for the next couple of months. You know, the landscaping wouldn't be done typically unless they've had a, basically a turnkey project built. You know, there's no grass, there's no pathways. People are constantly walking dust throughout their new home. And it becomes stressful for the owners when they realise the enormity of the process in front of them of, you know, potentially moving into a new home, keep on cleaning it down, and then coupled with having to organise Christmas as well. And as builders, we really don't want our projects to stretch over Christmas either, otherwise we have money tied up in projects sitting over the three-week shutdown period. And then to get the project back up and running in the new year takes a bit of extra steam, so we all want to work to get, you know, those homes completed before Christmas as well. But this year has been different. It has been an unprecedented year and I wanted to document what we've endured so we can look back and say, I remember that year, or you may never want to re remember this year. But what would we, I guess, so when we started 2021, you know, we, I guess before we started 2021, so back in 2020, we all would have known we had these building contracts that, we'd signed up before the end of the year deadline for clients to get their 25,000 home builder grant. You know, we would have, I guess, signed up potentially more projects than we may never, we may have done before. We would have all gone into Christmas thinking about the workload we had to return to in 2021. And I'm sure there, you know, there were builders that, you know, typically we start the year off slowly if we've finished most of our projects before Christmas to hand over to clients, you know, sort of January, February is quite quiet in, in the side of, you know, sales and marketing and the office side of things. There might still be projects that did extend over the Christmas period, but typically you try and finish them off to make sure you haven't got that money sitting out on job sites over Christmas period and then start the new year. But Clients typically don't come in to talk to builders till after the Christmas period and the school holidays are finished. So they might start filtering in over February. But we'd all probably signed up, you know, a lot of jobs and could have been almost some people doubled what they would normally sign up in a year that had been signed up before Christmas last year. So we were looking forward to a good year, probably a year that would bring us some much needed profits to top up our bank accounts. The enormity of what we would have, have to endure in 2021 started to rear its head in the last few months of 2020. 
The first signs were when the preliminary type processes were starting to back up. We had a deadline to get clients' contracts signed by the end of the year, but soil testing and engineering timeframes were blowing out due to the sheer volume of work that these engineering companies had in front of them. The tight home builder grant deadline to start construction within three months of signing the contract started to become impossible to reach and clients that had signed up under the expectation to be getting the $25,000 grant started to waver on the builders as they knew they had to get the job started for the client or they would the client would lose that $25,000 and who would be the ones that would cop the flack if the builder could not start due to the tight time frames with the pr preliminary processes taking so long. So industry bodies such as Master Builders and HIA were campaigning the government to extend the construction start time and we had a win which was announced in early December 2020. We had a construction type start time that was extended within to be six months. So we could breathe, breathe a little easier over the Christmas period knowing that we could get home started within that time frame. Along with that announcement, the government also extended the grant at a reduced rate of $15,000 for people to sign up till the end of March, 2021. So, you know, we thought, great, we can sign up more contracts. We have a longer time frame to get started. And I clearly remember my husband saying, there's no way it'll take me six months to get the home started. Then I recall him saying, I never thought it would take six months to get a home started, but it was starting to become a reality. Coupled with the home builder was JobKeeper. The industry started to see a lack of workers and tradesmen. We were finding it hard to get homes com completed in our usual time frames. The demand for labour was there and parts of the labour force that were getting JobKeeper seemed to be only working some days, not their usual five or six days. They had an extra $750 so that they, you know, they could have two days off and they were sort of ending up with the same sort of money in their pocket. So tradesmen's rates started to creep up. I had one of their prices increase by 25%, but they knew we were in a bind. You know, we could not get another tradesman to do the job. So this left us hamstrung. It left us having to, I guess, bite the bullet and pay the higher rate to get the homes finished. I clearly remember the phone call from my husband saying, X, I won't name the trade that it was, wants to charge me 25% more, but I need to hand the house over before Christmas, so I just have to pay it. And at the time, we we're thinking this would only be a one-off and we could sort out the rate of pay later once the homes were finished and moved on into the next year. But this was the first sign of significant price increases that were to hit us. I got a quote from an engineer at one stage as we were obviously desperately trying to meet the home builder grant deadlines for our clients and it was 200% more than our usual engineer. That was out of the question. We could have asked the client if they were happy to pay the difference or wait the two or three months, you know, turnaround at our existing engineering and we opted to wait as they, they did have enough time to meet the contract signing date of the end of the year. And in March 2021, we received our first circular from our local frame and trust supplier indicating that we were they were having struggles with the supply of timber and also there was price increases. Pine framing was to increase by 15% in June 2021 and floor systems and LVLs to increase by 9%. The suppliers were taking orders for July de delivery, so that was a four-month wait for prefabricated frame and trusses, and LVLs had an approximate 11-week wait on future orders. The next circular we got was a month later in April. There was no delivery dates on LVLs and a further price increase of 10 to 15% to come in September. So that would be a 25 to 30% increase in three months just on timber alone. The next circular, June 2020, pine framing, 10% increase in August and LVLs 9.5% in September. The circular dated August, number five, booked out till January 2022, a five month wait for prefabricated frame and trusses. LVLs to go up another 15% on the 1st of November and pine framing up 30% in September. Then comes circular number six, October 2021. Production of pre-frame, prefabricated frame and trusses would only be allocated a production time slot once the builders had met certain milestones. So there was no ability for builders to verbally indicate or you know, put themselves in the line, letting them know that that they had works coming. You know, if it was still, if the 
plans were still held up in engineering or, you know, they were still waiting on certain information, we weren't, we, we can't book a spot in until we had all those things in place so that the trust plant had all the details that they needed to push that order into production because they were found that, you know, builders were putting in themselves into a time slot and then not necessarily getting the information to them. So then that was affecting their production. So this is just the timeline of the last six months of circulars from one supplier. True core steel is to go up 40% in January 2022. Mesh products such as Rio up 24%. $13 per cubic metre increase in concrete. Some glass such as acid etch glass to go up 20%. The extent of the worldwide shortage is unprecedented and we still have no idea when things will be back to normal. I received an email from the roofing supplier yesterday and this was the exact wording. Insulation shortage. We've been advised by our suppliers that at this point in time, they cannot fill our insulation orders due to demand on their production. Please take into consideration when planning insulation orders this side of Christmas, and I believe the shortage is with all insulation suppliers. I forwarded the email to my staff with a what the F, not even another option. No, you know, I think it might be one month, two months, three months, no other option but to consider, but only to consider this when planning orders. Well, how can I put an order in? I can't, you're telling me I, I can't get anything. So how do I plan anything when you've not given me any indication of how long this product is going to be unavailable? You know, how can I plan and how can I order if I have no indication whatsoever of how this issue is going to be resolved? And this is what we are dealing with every day. My husband can't be reached on the phone regularly. He's constantly on the phone trying to keep our projects moving forward, not only for our clients but also for our business survival, for our employees' livelihoods. So what can we do about the issues? How can we protect our business? What can we do to mitigate the problems? You know, we have to pivot. We have to find ways to protect the longevity of our businesses. We have to change some of our processes and systems and we have to be on our game when it comes to dealing with and keeping our clients happy. We can't just stick our head in the sand. I know my husband to some extent has. He just has an attitude of I've committed to these contracts and I have to fulfil that commitment. And, yes, that is what we have to do. He has been accepting what he, I guess, can get and, unfortunately, to get that we and we as builders are having to accept significant price increases and we are absorbing these into our business, especially if we have fixed price contractors. At the moment, builders are reluctant to sign contracts because they can't afford to lose any more money. I had a difficult conversation with a client a week or so ago. We had quoted their home back in August and they'd moved forward with us based on that quote. Since it's taken three months to get the engineering plans and as I'd spoken about just before, timber alone has gone up about 45% with more to come. And we and I said to them, we have to requote their home to include these increases. They said at some point they won't be, it won't be viable for them to build. And I explained that I understand that that's their decision and they need to make that decision. But I've made the decision to ensure that my business stays viable and that I need to reprice the home as we hadn't gone to contract stage yet. So we need to start to be firm on requoting projects prior to contract stages. We need to look at alternative contract arrangements such as cost plus, which I really hate to use, but this may need to be the option we look at in the interim. These types of contracts comes with warnings and their own set of problems, you know, so get legal advice before you start using these types of options and bank, banks won't accept them as they want to know the full price of their asset. They want to know how much money they're going to have to be paying out. So, you know, I guess add all of this stuff onto our Christmas rush and we do deserve an extended holiday at the end of the year. We need to recharge and refocus on what we are here for. So this Thursday night and Friday, I'm holding a virtual workshop, the Custom Construct work Workshop, on how to unlock your three biggest opportunities to scale your biz building business, to uncover more profits and time. We need to look at our business and take off, I guess, the rose-coloured glasses and really dig down and uncover what is really happening in our business at the moment. I know we just have been heads down, bums up, and we need to start the new year on the right trajectory. So let's tackle this coming year together. 
you can go to my website, designherbuilder.com and click on the link to register for the workshop. And I look forward to seeing you there and together building a plan for the future successes in 2020. But until then, keep powering your business.